good evening everyone good evening good evening and welcome to theology on thursdays with destiny global church my name is minister kiara kelly jones people like to call me kkj but um today i'm super excited to be with y'all how y'all doing how y'all doing hey y'all listen theology on thursdays today is going to be so awesome definitely have a word from the lord but do me a favor if you have not already i need you to like this video share this video tag some friends tell them to get one in here let's see who is here let's see who's in the comments let's see let's see let's see hello everyone hello hello all right if you do not already, there's some things that you need to have tonight. You need to have your Bible. You need to have something to take your notes on. But you also need to have your snack. Okay? Because listen, one thing about me, I love my Blue Bunny. I love my snack. Um, Blue Bunny ice cream. Make sure I always have it. Hey, y'all. Welcome. Do me a favor. Comment. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're here. Thank y'all so much for joining. Make sure y'all got y'all snack. I'm excited about today. Um, I first want to give honor to our apostles, Apostle Dwayne and Apostle Cheryl Whitehead for um, just being awesome and great leaders and also for allowing me this opportunity to share with you all. Hey, Mish. Hey, girl. Hey, y'all. Um, and to everyone who is watching, I hope y'all had a good day. How was y'all day? Tell me in the comments. How was y'all day? It's Thursday, y'all. It's the day before Friday. We love that. Hey, Isaiah. We love the day before Friday, okay? Strong. All right. All right, all right. Hey, Eric. He said he had a good day. That's what I like to hear. We out here trying. To have a good day, okay. It's nice outside. Well, at least in Richmond, it is. It's giving good weather. All right, hey y'all. All y'all coming in? Hey y'all. Like I said before, make sure y'all got y'all Bible. Y'all got something to write your notes in. But do not forget your snack. Your snack is important. My snack tonight. Is uh, Blue Bunny Loaded Sundays because your girl loves some ice cream. And this is the chocolate brownie bomb. It's super good. You might need some water after you eat it, but it's still real good. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into the word and get started. So I'm super excited tonight because I'm going to be talking about my personal bestie. Y'all. I know y'all are probably like, who's she about to talk about? In my life, I have discovered that the Holy Spirit has become my absolute best friend. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of why. You think about a ride or die. You think about someone who is down for the nitty gritty, the good, bad, the ugly, all the ups and downs of your life. The Holy Spirit is the definition of a ride or die for me. Okay. I think we can all agree that the supernatural being of the Holy Spirit is really, really something that we need in this life because life get a little ghetto, get a little crazy, right? And so one of the things that I realized about the Holy Spirit is sometimes we like to compartmentalize the Holy Spirit, right? We like to be like, okay, well, I need the Holy Spirit when I'm in church and I need to do something churchy or I need the Holy Spirit like when I need to make a decision, I'm like, oh, Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. But sometimes we don't like to talk about the fact that the Holy Spirit is down for the good, the bad, and the ugly. And life gets a little ugly. And sometimes we have to let him into that space and so one of the things that um i've just discovered in walking with the holy spirit is that when i say he's down for the good the bad and the ugly i've realized that he's really down for the sanctification process of who we are right he's down for what we have to go through to be more like christ what we go through to identify more with who christ was and is currently in the earth 
that's kind of what he's here for, right? And that can be really messy. And it's a constant process. It's something that doesn't just happen once. It happens throughout our life. And um, I asked God, I was like, okay, so as I go through life, the Holy Spirit is my personal bestie. He's like a life hack. He's telling me which way to go and different stuff like that. But this sanctification piece, right? If we can be honest, that's the part where we're like, absolutely not. I'm actually good on that. You can be doing a little bit too much. You'd be taking me through the ups and downs and lows and highs of life. It'd be a little bit too much for me. And I said, well, God, what exactly is that? And he said, it's because I don't want you to just be saved. I want you to be like me. I want you to be holy. Right? I want you to be holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13 13 through 16 says, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming as obedient children. Do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And I was like, okay, well, what does that really mean? What does it mean to be holy? And the Holy Spirit told me that that is, I want you to be like me. I want you to be more like me. I don't want you to just know me. I want you to be like me, right? And in doing that, I realized that that's a really heavy mandate. Jesus was out here turning the other cheek. He was out here healing the sick. He was out here being nice to people that was real mean to him. He was out here going through the real life struggle, okay? Having friends betray him, all this stuff. And it's like, how did you maintain this standard as you went through this? And what I love about God is he said, well, guess what? I want you to be like me, but I am not going to let you do it alone, right? First, um, not first John, but John chapter 14, verse six, verse 26 rather states, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. His spirit literally helps us through the process of sanctification. He doesn't just say, I want you to be this thing. Have you ever been in a class? I guess for my college students or those who have gone to any form of school, you've been to a class and they give you an assignment and they're like, well, I just want you to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, hey, you haven't taught me anything. Actually, you've given me no blueprint. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how to do this, but you want me to execute this assignment and you've given me literally no instruction on how to do it. But yet you're going to grade me on the assignment. The Holy Spirit says, I'm not going to set you up like that. Yes, I want you to be holy. Yes, I want you to be more like me. Yes, I want you to walk in sanctification. But I am going to give you my spirit so that I can help make you holy. I love that about God. He makes us into who he has called us to be. Right? And so we're going to navigate tonight a little bit of how he makes us holy. Okay, he makes us holy through these two things that are really not as complicated as I believe people make them. But these two things called fruit and gifts. God showed me that he develops the fruit of his character inside of us. But then he also gives us gifts. Right. And so what's the difference? The gifts of the spirit are what we do and manifest that Jesus did, right? But the fruit deals with the character of who Jesus was in the earth. And a lot of times we like to focus on the gifts, right? Like I want the gifts of healing. I want the gifts of prophecy and all these other things. And tonight we don't get the gifts, but I really want to start with the hard part. Right. And that's that fruit. That's that sanctification process. That's that process that makes us more like Christ and the character of Christ being developed in us. That usually, like we said, it gets a little messy. Right. So Galatians chapter five, verses 18 through 23, it says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. 
which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, um, dissensions, herseries, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelers, and the likes of which I tell you beforehand. Just as I have told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is my favorite part. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Such Against such there is no law. Now, if we actually look at verses 19 through 21... Those are the things that we see most prominent in the earth, right? And the reason why we see that most prominent in the earth is because whatever you eat is what's going to come out of you, right? Whatever you are fed is what's going to come out of you. The Bible says that we are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We don't have to look far to find the things in verse 19 through 21. What does that say? That says we have to be intentional about what we feed ourselves, about what we are around, about what we literally allow God to put inside of us. We have to be submitted to that, to that sanctification process, right? We are literally fed the fruit of the world from the womb in the air of TV, walking down the street, from being in school, different stuff like that. So we have to literally work overtime to make sure that we are in our word, that we are around like-minded people, that we are doing the things that we need to do in the spirit in order to develop those fruits that are inside of us, that characteristic of Christ, right? You, you can naturally say that those fruits are a little hard. It's a little hard to love somebody when they being mean to you. It's a little hard to have peace in a really hectic situation, right? And so that's why we lean on the Holy Spirit and we say, Holy Spirit, I need you to teach me. I need you to show me. I need you to walk me through this thing. I admit that this is difficult, but I don't want to do this in my own strength. I need you to show me how to be more like Christ, right? And <laughs> one of the funny things about the scripture to me is that it literally talks, it spends all this time talking about all the things that are the fruit of the law, right? The, the fruit of the law, the fruit of the enemy of our souls, the fruit of the air, right? And then it says, but here, I need one verse to tell you about how we remedy this. So that's, what does that tell me? That means that everything that I encounter Everything that I face, everything that looks opposite of God is no match for the spirit of God that's in me. It's literally no match. The spirit of God that is in us is able to combat everything that we see in the world that is not like him. And if we be honest, it's also able to combat everything that we see in us that's not like him. But what it takes is us saying, okay, Holy Spirit. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to be more like you. It takes that original surrender that says, listen, I can't do this by myself. Because if I do this by myself, my first instinct is to curse that person out. If I do this by myself, that first instinct is to not speak to the person that you told me to speak to. If I do this by myself, my first instinct is to get even with somebody who has done something to me. But if I decide I'm going to tap in intentionally to the Holy Spirit, you can help me not be more like myself or like my instincts. You can help me be more like Jesus. Right. And that is the game to the fruits of the spirit to honestly be more like Christ. My brother used to say there's a lot of people that want to know Christ, but it takes someone to want to be like Christ and to really develop those characteristics inside of us. So God cultivates that inside of us. That's why it's called fruit, right? The analogy that I have for fruit is that when you think of a fruit, it's a seed that goes into the ground. It's watered. It's cultivated. It goes through rainy seasons. It has to be taken care of. It's, it goes underground in dirt, all of those things. And then before you know it, it's 
sprouts up. And that fruit, once you eat it, it's like, mm, that's good. But if you really think about it, it didn't start as an apple. It didn't start as an orange. It didn't start as any of that stuff. It started underground going through that process. And a lot of times, that's what we feel. We feel the process. But we're not alone in the process. The Holy Spirit is there helping us through it and making us holy. And then... Once we have been able to develop the characteristics of Christ and develop who Christ is in us, he says, okay, now I can trust you with the gifts. I can trust you with doing what I did because I know you have the heart behind which I did it. Right? Because it's one thing to be able to heal, but if you're healing for selfish ambitions, then did you really do it like Christ? Right. It's another thing to have different gifts of the spirit. But if you didn't do it from a process of literally love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness, do you really are you really doing it out of the spirit of Christ? And so as we go through our lives and as we go through different things and we ask God for the gifts of the spirit and we ask him, hey, Teach me how to be a vessel of healing. Teach me how to be a vessel of being prophetic or give me the spirit of discernment. Give me all of those things. But God, teach me how to be kind. Teach me how to literally depend on you for your ultimate peace. Teach me how to be faithful. Teach me how not to give up so easy. Teach me how to love from a place of being yours, right? Teach me how to have self con that's the one. Teach me how to have self-control. <laughs> Teach me how to make decisions based on what you want to see in the earth and not based on my feelings. That's what I want. I want to be like you. I want to develop like you. So that when people eat the fruit of who I am, they can say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Why? Because they were able to taste the fruit of who I am and they were able to taste and see you. That's why he develops these fruit inside of us. That's why he says, listen, you're going to go through life and it's going to get a little ghetto, but I'm going to put my spirit in you. If you allow me to cultivate who I am and who I was in the earth, not only will your life be fruitful, but other people's lives will be fruitful from what they see in you, from what they experience in you, from what they gather from you. And that's the mandate. That's us being holy. That's, that's him making us holy. It ain't going to be easy. But if we surrender to the process, I can guarantee you that it's going to be worth it. So my prayer tonight is that we ask God to cultivate us, to develop his character inside of us. Before we ask for all the gifts and listen, the gifts are good. OK, who don't want a present? Hmm? The gifts are good. But God, I want you to process who I am. I want you to develop your character inside of me. I want people to be able to taste the fruit of who I am and see you and feel you and know you. And I want to be the first partaker of that. I want to feel your love. I want to feel your peace. I want to feel your joy. I want that to be filled up inside of me so that it overflows when people literally come in contact with me. So tonight... My prayer is that we begin to ask God to develop his spirit inside of us. Not only that you guide us in all truths and that you're a life hack for us, but also that you begin to make us holy. You begin to make us more like you, Jesus. That we begin to truly be examples of who you were in the earth. And so I really hope that you all were blessed and that you guys took that challenge with me because I'm taking it too. We're going to do it together. Okay. But all of us, all of us on this live, we're all going to commit to asking God to develop who he is inside of us so that the world can see him on another level, but also so that we can see him in ourselves. 
All right. So I just want to take a moment right here and pray for us. Because like I started out saying, I started out letting y'all know off the cuff. This is a little messy process. All right. This isn't easy. This is hard. This is the hard work. When you have to go inside yourself and say, do I really love people the way I'm supposed to? I be asking God for peace, but do I carry peace myself? God, I need you to be patient with me. You know you're not through with me yet, but am I patient with my neighbor? So sometimes it takes more than just saying, this is what I want from you, God. But it takes true humbleness and submission to the spirit to say, God, I want you to develop those things inside of me. So we're just going to pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are and who you've always been. God, thank you that you loved us enough to not have us navigate this world alone, but that you sent us an advocate, that you were able to literally help us be more like you. You didn't just say be holy. You said, I'm going to give you a way to be made holy. I'm going to make you holy in my image, in my likeness, through my spirit. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that not only do you challenge us to, to give these things but these are the things that you give to us that you show us love that you show us grace that you show us kindness that you show us long suffering God now father I ask that you would check our hearts tonight that you would read us tonight that you would show us who we really are God I pray that you would show us the ways and and that we can be more like you father I pray that you open our hearts to asking you for help that when we ask for the helper to help us that we are not just asking for our a random reason but we're asking because we know that you want to help us that you spent your spirit here specifically to help us be more like who you are God I thank you that you didn't send us on a dead mission that you didn't give us an assignment that you did not give us the tools to help us accomplish it father I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that even as we are praying even as we are here on this live that you are developing the fruits of the spirit even the more inside of each and every one of us that we'll able to look back and say wow God, you really have cultivated the spirit of love in me. God, you really have cultivated the spirit of peace in me. God, not just for ourselves, not just for our families, but so that this entire world can experience more of who you are. So this entire world can taste and see that the Lord is good. So this entire world can have a tangible example of who you are in this earth. Father, I thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, that you are drawing all men unto you as we live lift you up as we lift you up in our lives as we lift you up in our family as we lift you up above our own ambitions as we lift you up above everything that was named in the verse prior to the gifts um, or prior to the fruit as we lift you up above all that that you are drawing all men unto you because we decided to say yes so father I thank you I thank you for the change in our spheres of influence that we will experience because of this fruit I thank you for the change in our jobs that we will experience because of this fruit. And I thank you for the change that will be replicated in this world because the children of God have decided to surrender to the spirit of God and develop the character of God. Father, we love you. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. And it's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I love y'all. I thank Thank y'all so much for joining us. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to sow. If you have not already, I want you to check in the comments. We have methods for you to sow into Destiny Global Church and everything that we are doing. Listen, let me tell you something. This is good ground. So you want to make sure that you are sowing into this movement and into this ministry. We love y'all so, so much. We are praying for you all and we're praying for your journey. Don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit to help you with your fruit. Good night, everyone.